Welcome back to Dirty 20 everybody. Today we take a look at the barbarian hero of Icewind Dale, Wolfgar. Let's get on with the show. What's up, lovely people? Today we finish off our little mini-series in honour of Forgotten Realms Dark Alliance, the video game that came out just at the end of last month, um, which hopefully people are enjoying and playing, but I wanted to bring to you the backstories and some of the cool elements of the characters that are featured in the game, and maybe inspire you to put these characters into your campaign somehow. If you haven't checked out the videos on Drist, Catty Bree and Bruinor, please do so. Um, the links are in the description below. Also, stick around till the end of this video to check out a new section that uh, we're trying out. So, like the other members of the Companions of the Hall, Wolfgar has appeared in novels and video games for decades. With the Barbarian being a staple of the fantasy genre, think uh, Conan, Wolfgar is your prototypical one. A giant of a man standing almost seven feet tall with long blonde hair and rippling muscles but his tale is quite a tragic one. Before we get into it though, if I could remind you to subscribe if you already haven't, and hit the bell notification icon so that you're alerted whenever we put out new videos. We do weekly D&D &D videos, we also do one-shots, we're doing Carnivale Law, there's a new Doctors of the Ospedale out now, please check it out, and uh, we're planning lots more stuff in the future. Also, hitting that like button would be hugely appreciated as it allows us to reach more people. Wolfgar was born son of Bjorngar, a member of the Uthgard tribe of the Elk in Icewind Dale. As a child, he was a flag bearer of the king of the tribe of the Elk, and during a raid on ten towns uh, that was repelled by Clan Battlehammer, he was knocked out and left for dead. When the battle had ended and the people of ten towns were slitting the throats of the injured barbarians left behind, Bruno Battlehammer stepped in and spared the child. Instead, he sentenced him to servitude for five years years and a day. Wolfgar would turn Bruinor's opinion of him though over time and they would develop a father-son relationship. Now before his sentence was up, Bruinor crafted the legendary battle hammer Aegis Fang for Wolfgar. A battle hammer that would be connected to Wolfgar for his whole life and beyond. Wolfgar would also be trained in combat by Drist and he would cement his name among the people of Icewind Dale when he defeated a white dragon, became the leader of the tribes and forged an alliance with the people of Ten Towns. From this day forward, he began to be known as Dragon's Bane. Wolfgar's real test though would come when, in a desperate attempt to save his beloved Catty Bree, he collapsed the ceiling of a cave on himself and the creature in which he was locked in combat with, a Yochol. Seemingly dying, Wolfgar, however, would be dragged to the abyss by the Yochol. He would end up in the hands of a Balor named Urtu, and for six years he would endure constant torture, both physical and mental, he was shown the deaths of his friends and his beloved Catty Bree over and over again, and he was killed and brought back to life again and again. He managed to escape when the companions defeated Urtu while he was on the material plane. The reunion was short-lived, however, as the torture that Wolfgar had endured day after day just overwhelmed him, and he ended up attacking Catty Bree and fleeing. Eventually, he ended up in Luskan, the den of scum and piracy of the Forgotten Realms. And he ended up as a bouncer and took to drink. His only solace in this time was meeting his soon-to-be wife, Deli Kurti. During this time, he would lose his iconic weapon, Aegis Fang, when it was stolen from him and sold to a pirate captain. And he would also be caught up in an assassination plot that led to him being exiled from Luskan. This is when he became a highwayman in the region. 
he would end up adopting a baby with his wife, recovering his battle hammer, and reuniting with his old friends, all while overcoming his demons. This would mark the beginning of one of the most idyllic times of Wolfgar's life, married with a child and continuing his adventures with the companions. Once again, though, it would not last. With the ongoing war with Obald Many Arrows, uh, Delhi and the baby were sequestered in Mithril Hall, and over time, despair started to take a hold. This awakened the interest of Kazidhair, Catty Bree's sentient sword. I told you this was a bad idea in the Catty Bree video. Overwhelmed by the desire to kill of the sword, Delhi managed to overcome herself and the sword in order to stop herself from doing the unthinkable. She would flee the safety of the hall, though, and be cut down by the Orc Horde. Wolfgar, bereft, returned his daughter to her birth mother and went back to Icewind Dale. Years later, Drist and Regis would go looking for Wolfgar, finding him in self-imposed exile in order to reconnect with his people and their ways. Wolfgar would live to be over a hundred, and at the time of his death, he had three surviving children of four, nine grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, with his son leading the tribe of the Elk and other family members in positions of power among the other tribes. Even in death, he would show his strength when he succumbed to wounds from an encounter with yetis, but not before taking down several of them with his bare hands. But as we know, in D&D, no one's ever really dead. Wolfgar would go on to an afterlife in a pocket dimension where he would be reunited with Catty Bree, Regis, and Brunel. Even though he was kind of hoping to end up in Warrior's Rest, which is like the eternal battleground of the followers of Tempus. But Wolfgar was reborn Hrolf of the Tribe of the Elk. And like the other members of the Companions of the Hall, they would reunite Calvin's Cairn at the appointed time in order to aid Drist in his darkest hour. Whew! That was an intense one. Now, Wolfgar has a really rich story, and I think there's lots of points in his life that are, like, awesome places to mine story ideas and plot hooks and things like that. For example, his days as a bouncer in Luskan, uh, you know, taking to drink and having lost his way, this legendary hero, I think that could be a really interesting time to, to explore, if for no other reason than to visit Luskan. Also, his hammer, Aegis Fang, could be like an interesting way to do a, like a little cameo, you know, if it appears in your campaign and, you know, the characters learn about Wolfgar and the companions through that. I think that's always like a really nice touch and it really helps in the world building. Most of all, I think that Wolfgar's story and the impact that it has says a lot about hardship and about the need for good characters to experience hardship, whether, whether you write it into your backstory or whether it comes through the choices that your character makes throughout the campaign. Okay then, boys and girls, so uh, this is going to be our new section. At the end of each video, we're going to actually make a character. We're going to use 5th edition character creator to uh, create uh, a character related to whatever the topic was that we were talking that week. And so today I thought we would build a, um, a Wolfgar, see how that goes. So for race, obviously we're gonna go for human. Um, and then there's different sub races. The variant one obviously gives you that extra um, feet starting out, but we're going to go with, uh, and in fact, yes, we're going to go with a variant human. We're going to go barbarian, obviously. Now, background, ah, that's tough. Um, so you have, uh, this one, which is barbarian tribe member. That seems like the best one. We're only going to build him up to level four, just because that's kind of where I like to start a lot of my campaigns, and uh, it makes sense to me. Okay, now skills. I think uh, we're going to go with athletics, just because um, he is a, a, a beast of a, of, a, of a dude. Hench, some might say. Uh, and when it comes to stats, I like to do a heroic array. 
So that's uh, 16, 15, uh, 12, 11, 10, 8. So uh, straight away, I'm going to go in 16 strength and constitution 15. Uh, he's a barbarian again. Everything's going to be strength related. Hit points are going to be a big thing. So I'm going to go there. Uh, then the next 12, I think I'm going to go dexterity because it's going to impact on, um, you know, my AC and things like that. Uh, then I think I might go 11 wisdom. I might go 10, no, I'm going to go 10 charisma and I'm going to go 8 intelligence. So I'm dumping intelligence as one is wont to do when they make a barbarian. Uh, but yes, now I'm going to add plus one to two of these. So I think straight away I'm going to go plus one to constitution and I'm going to go plus one to wisdom just to even those scores out. I can pick two more skills. Uh, now, this is where I kind of get a little bit annoyed because... You know, we've kind of semi-dumped Charisma. Um, but he's an intimidating dude. He's seven feet tall. He's strong as hell. So I'm going to take Intimidation, even though um, that is going to, you know, uh, not be great. But I'm going to go with Intimidation and Perception, just because Perception is just the most common thing that you roll. So why not? Uh, now, in terms of feats, Great Weapon Master is a possibility, so you can make a bonus action attack after critting or killing a creature, and you can take minus 5 to a melee attack for plus 10 damage. That's always a great one. It's similar to Sharpshooter for, um, you know, long distance uh, attackers and stuff like that. Um... Armor, no mobile is not a terrible one. Gaining speed, but I think it's it, it doesn't do much. It's just nice to have. Um, observant is always quite cool. Plus five to pass perception. Our perception isn't great in general. And you get plus one to wisdom or intelligence. Man, we don't really care about that. Savage attacker. Now... Uh, that's pretty cool. That allows you to re-roll melee weapon damage once per turn. That might be like a racial one. So 5th edition character creator is, is great. But, um, you know, sometimes some stuff is uh, a little out there. You can select what uh, you use. But, um, yeah. Weapon master gives you proficiencies plus 1 to strength or dexterity. That could be interesting. Uh, Prodigy is always pretty cool. Crusher, what's that? Creatures you critically bludgeon grant advantage to attackers until your next turn. You can move a creature five feet with a bludgeoning attack once per turn, plus one to the strength. That's kind of cool, especially if we're going to give him a battle hammer, you know, like Aegis Fang. Later on, we're not going to give him magical items or anything like that. But that is pretty cool. Skill Expert, this is one that came out in Tasha's, which I kind of like. Train an extra skill, gain exper expertise in a skill, and plus one to an ability score. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go with Skill Expert, because um, I am going to select for his next skill. Uh, I'm going to go with Acrobatics, because it's, again, super handy one. Now, Expertise... I'm going to give it to Athletics. So, uh, and a plus one in Strength. I'm going to go straight for Strength because eventually you're going to want to up that to 20 as soon as you can, probably. Okay, uh, so that gives us a 12 um, plus 3, so 15 hit points at level 1. Uh, now, in terms of Equipment, I'm going to go straight away... And I'm going to go to a Warhammer. Okay. Oh, see, that Crusher's now making me think, ooh, maybe I should have picked that for the feet. But anyway. Uh, and we'll apply that. 
We'll take the hand axes, the explorer's pack, and the javelin. I always just take whatever they give me, and then I edit it after the fact. So, we have a human barbarian, level 1, barbarian tribe member. We're going to give him the name of the legendary Wolfgar. And now, what we're going to do, so you can see here, it gives you your stats, your... Uh, HP, your level, speed, initiative, you know, your general stats, and then skills. Look at that, plus seven athletics. Well, that's nice. Uh, Warhammer, hand axe, javelin gives you stats for that. Here you get the breakdown, tells you your race, background, alignment, which I always forget to fill in, <laughs> experience. And then it gives you the features, right? So one extra skill proficiency of your choosing, one bonus feat of your choosing. That's the human variant features. Barbarian tribe member feature. You can forage for twice as much food and water while in the wilderness and have knowledge of barbarian lands. Super not very helpful. But honestly, most of the kind of background features are not that super interesting. Twice per day, you gain advantage on strength checks uh, and saves, deal plus two damage on strength-based melee attacks and resistance versus bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That is your rage. You can add your con modifier to your AC when not wearing armor. And we took the skill expert, training and extra skill, gaining expertise. We took athletics and a plus one to an ability score, which we chose strength. Okay. Uh, you have proficiencies in those things. Um, tool proficiencies. Languages. Again, you can choose one extra language. You get your equipment. And then you have spaces to write in your info, which is pretty cool. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to level up. Uh, so, let's level up. We're going to stick with Barbarian. We're going to go up. Uh, and usually, you just you can take the average, you can roll it, or you can just take max, depending on how your team does it, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm taking the average. That's what I usually do. Uh, so, at level 2, you now have 25 hit points. Um, armor class is 14. Now, just to check here, right? So you can see, because I'm a barbarian, you've got the ability um, modifier of constitution. Uh, you start with 10, dex of plus 1. Uh, so 11 plus 3. Again, my armor class is not spectacular, but that's not what barbarians are about. Barbarians are more about absorbing hits, absorbing, like, they usually have a pile of hit points. Level 225 is not bad at all. Um, then, uh, it kind of adds to uh, what you get every level, right? So, uh, you gain advantage on strength-based melee attacks by granting advantage to attacks against you for the round. That's the reckless attack feature. You gain advantage on dexterity saves and thing uh, versus things you can see. That's the kind of heightened senses of the barbarian. But let's level up again. Additional barbarian skills. Ooh, let's decline that. Let's go classic. And here at level three, we're going to select an archetype. Now, ancestral guardian, battle rager, beast, berserker, storm herald, totem, wild magic, zealot. These are all subclasses. Um, for the Barbarian. Uh, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, um, the Totem is, I would say, hands down the best. I haven't seen some of the newer uh, subclasses, but in my experience, the Totem is the best. And here you have to choose an animal, uh, which gives you different uh, abilities, right? So if you choose bear, you gain resistance versus all damage but psychic while raging. Now, that is clearly the best one, but thematically, because Wolfgar is of the tribe of the elk, I'm going to go with elk. You gain plus 15 foot of speed while raging and not in heavy armor. So let's go with that. Uh, we take the average again. Gives us 7... Uh, plus our con modifier of 3 takes us to 35. And now we're at level 3. Um, so this is when things start to get more and more interesting. But I personally 
in the past, I used to start at level three, but for me, level four is where it's at. Because this is where you get your first ability score increase or um, a feat. And in this case, um, I think that I'm going to go with an ability score increase. Now, I could go one uh, or plus two on strength, which would get me to 17. Or I could go plus one on strength and plus one on on dexterity now the plus one on strength would get me to 18 which is a plus four and the dexterity would get me to 13 so no plus but next time maybe i choose a feat uh which gives me a plus one to dexterity and i get that up to a plus two so i think that's what i'm going to do and there we have it so wolfgar Barbarian, level 4, 45 hit points, a speed of 30, 45 when raging, armor class of 14, again, you're a soaker of damage, that's really more what you're about, um, but if you are struggling with it, pick up a shield, <laughs> um, or, uh, I mean, put on some armor, I would say no, because at the minute... Um, your constitution and your your strength are pretty sick. Um, you could have put maybe two into constitution uh, when we did the ability score increase, which would have got you to plus six on that, which would have also increased your armor class. That's a pretty uh, cool uh, option, certainly. Uh, but, you know, an athletics of plus eight with advantage when you're raging means that you really are just a, a, a hench beast. Uh, you know, plus six to hit, 1d8 plus four damage on your Warhammer. That's before you even get into potentially picking up a magical hammer. Um, and, uh, you know, that extra speed is cool. If you don't like that, go with bear. Um, you know, resistance to means that uh, you take half damage. And if it's against all damage types apart from psychic i mean your your armor class just really doesn't matter that much but there we go so um first time we're doing this please let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it and uh, let us know if there are any particular characters that you'd like to see a build of there we have it lovely people thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far, why not drop us a comment down below letting us know what you think about Wolfgar and the Companions of the Hall. Now, this wraps up the four characters that are featured in uh, Dark Alliance, but I feel kind of uh, like it's an unfinished thing if I don't do one on, on Regis, maybe a bonus one just to complete the, the Companions of the Hall. Uh, but yeah, give this video a like. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see that, and we'll catch you on the next one. As always, stay safe and keep slaying. If you've enjoyed this content, then please smash that like button, subscribe, share this around online, and uh, come and visit our website, www.lavictoriaproductions.com, to see all our past episodes, as well as our blog posts, and all the stuff that we're currently working on at La Victoria Productions. Why not reach out to us and tell us what you think of our videos? You can reach us on Twitter, at Mouth La Victoria is our producer. We are also on Instagram. I am Enano LVP, and our producer is Jazzy J. Chiro. We're also La Victoria Productions on Facebook and LinkedIn. Come on by and let us know what you think.